What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new video and first and foremost, thank you for clicking on this video and unfortunately, as you all are probably aware now, we're talking about a pretty sad negative topic. It might be a little bit of a lengthy video because we are going to dig into this. As you may have heard already, the Batgirl movie has been completely axed, killed, shelved, at Warner Brothers. It will not be releasing theatrically, it will not be releasing on HBO Max, nor is it even able legally to be sold to another studio. We will get into that. But more importantly, as I was saying, I want to dig into the deeper mix of reasons, explain what is going on there, how this could actually affect the future of the DCEU with potential behind the scenes DCEU continuity changes, and how even more projects like this could be in danger as a result of this unprecedented decision. And I say it like that because a rival studio executive informed Justin Kroll, who writes for Deadline, worked in this town for three decades, and this is some unprecedented shit right here. And it really kind of is. And I know there is likely and lots of talk of even more big reveals like this to come potentially, but I'm gonna be busy with Netflix's The Sandman Thursday and Friday, so if anything much bigger drops, just know that I will be covering it on the channel on the weekend, likely Saturday. Now very briefly, just before we get into all of the details, I just want to give my impression right off the bat, like my reaction, and let me put it this way. I was looking forward to Batgirl, I wasn't out of this world massively, massively, massively hyped for it, although I was really looking forward to Brendan Frazier having a bit of a comeback, even though he's already had a bit of a comeback, but it would have been another box ticked on the Frazier return. But I just feel so deflated. I, I have this kind of looming feeling of sadness, and it's mainly for the people who worked on this movie. Can you imagine shooting a movie, you wrap the movie, it is also basically in the final stages of post-production. You're the star of the movie, you're the female lead, you're going to be a live-action Batgirl, or you're a director, one of the two directors, Adil El Arbi or Bilal Fala, and one of them just found out that Batgirl was completely cancelled whilst they were at Adil's wedding in Morocco. Like, can you even imagine how these people are feeling right now, let alone the whole cast, the whole crew. I know some of you will be like, well, I didn't care about Batgirl anyway. It's, it, even if you didn't, it's just, I feel so bad for them. So, I've got my coffee prepared, I recommend you do the same, and let's get into what Variety initially has to say. So Studio Insiders insist the decision to axe Batgirl was not driven by the quality of the film or the commitment of the filmmakers, but by the desire for the studio's slate of DC features to be at a blockbuster scale. Batgirl was budgeted to screen in homes on HBO Max and not for a major global release in theaters. The initial $75 million production budget for the project, which finished principal photography earlier this year and was in post-production, reached $90 million due in part to COVID-related delays and protocols. The decision still comes as a shock as studios almost never shelve productions outright, preferring to get at least some return on their investment. But you may be wondering, like, but why was it exactly cancelled. What have reps at Warner Brothers Discovery said about this? And it's not maybe of what some of you are thinking with the whole comment of, oh, it must have been so bad for them to throw away 90 million on it. In fact, not really. I mean, the New York Post is saying that, but that article has got a, a bunch of inconsistencies and stuff in it. Lots of other sources say the test screenings went actually quite positively. Well, first of all, let's read out Warner Brothers Discovery's statement and then get into the other reasons that are beaming through the clouds that are being cast before us. So Warner Brothers Discovery said the decision to not release Batgirl reflects our leadership's strategic shift as it relates to the DC Universe and HBO Max. Leslie Grace is an incredibly talented actor and this decision is not a reflection of her performance. We are incredibly grateful to the filmmakers of Batgirl and Scoob Holiday Hunt and their respective casts and we hope to collaborate with everyone again in the near future. Future. So with that said from Warner Brothers Discovery, let's dig a little deeper. Long story short, believe it or not, there's a few reasons at play here. Some that even to somewhat 
I don't really want to say contradict each other, but it's like one reason is being put out, but then actually underneath that reason, there's this reason as well. What I mean by that in terms of saying they give one answer and how sources say that the film did not fall in line with the new strategy being implemented by DC Films as well as HBO Max, and how the studio is looking to make more theatrical tent poles. So, Batgirl, of which is starring J.K. Simmons, Michael Keaton, then the one, as you all know, I was really looking forward to see, Brendan Frazier, and then, of course, the rest of the cast, Batgirl herself, Leslie Grace, isn't theatrical enough for them with their new model of making really huge tent poles. Okay, not theatrical enough, not in line with their future, you know, huge tent pole movies, a part of their strategic model. Yet, the other reason that's now being reported by Major Trades, despite what we just read out with the more or less studio response, well, the other reason of what feels like an arguably bigger reason, as Variety go on to say, according to sources with knowledge of the situation, the most likely reason, taxes. Now, to be fair, just for argument's sake, to play both sides of the fence here. Sources do note that yes, and I do acknowledge this, that Batgirl was indeed made under a different regime at Warner Brothers, which was headed by Jason Keeler and Anne Sarnoff, of whom were singularly focused on building their streaming service HBO Max. But then, here's the thing, we had, of course, the Warner Brothers Discovery merger, with David Zaslav taking the reins at the newly formed Warner Brothers. Now, it's important to know, again, to acknowledge every aspect of what's at play here, that one of Zaslav's big efforts, I'm losing my voice already, with the newly formed Warner Brothers after the merger, was indeed to make absolutely no secret of reversing Keeler's strategy, and instead committing to releasing first-run feature films in theaters before putting them on HBO Max. So here's the thing, Zaslav slash Warner Brothers Discovery, after this merger, the new Warner Brothers, didn't feel as though Batgirl was big enough to feel worthy of a major theatrical release. Also, we need to acknowledge that Warner Brothers Discovery would have needed to have put millions, and I mean many millions, on top of the current $90 million that Batgirl had already spent during production with the marketing. If they wanted to push it out for a theatrical release, especially with what is needed for a global release, it would have needed millions, tens of millions more. Even though, at the same time, it, it wasn't really properly aiming for a theatrical release, which is why this is getting a bit of frustration from fans, because it was solely at its inception an HBO Max release. Which is why many fans are like, well, like, if it's wrapped, quite a while ago, it's been in post-production for a while, you know, they're, they're editing it. A lot of people are like, will release it on HBO Max then. And you may be wondering, why aren't they doing that? And as the major trades report, that does seem like the most obvious solution, doesn't it? Like, okay, like it doesn't line up to your scope and uh, of a tentpole DC production to put out theatrically. You don't want to spend tens of mils more to put it in the theaters, especially for a global role. Okay, we, we get it. Put it on HBO Max then. It's the most obvious solution, right? But the reason why they don't want to do that, going back to the taxes comment of earlier, is that several sources say it will almost certainly take a tax write-down on Batgirl, seen internally as the most financially sound way to recoup the costs and more or less justify it by chalking it up to a post-merger change of strategy, from that of the old Warner Brothers to that of the new one that is formed with Warner Brothers Discovery under Zaslav's leadership. So now you see what I'm saying, okay, the, the, the statement says it doesn't basically fit with their new idea of movies in terms of like needing tentpole ones. It's not theatrical enough, it's not big enough. Yet now we're hearing about they want to have a tax write down with regards to it. And this is where things get more interesting because of the three billion dollars they are trying to trim the fat off over at Warner Brothers Discovery. And that's where we're gonna get into that. Now here's the thing, we've acknowledged that Batgirl was a movie now wrapped and in post-production under that of the old Warner Brothers regime, of which Zaslav and Warner Brothers Discovery do not want to adhere to. Okay, like, 
you know, I'll play ball there. But the thing is that a lot of people, including myself, can't really seem to, it's hard to let it sink in, to spend $90 million. This was already spent, guys. It has reportedly been test screened, and despite what you may have heard from unreliable sources, it has been reported by major trades that it was received fairly positively. People apparently love Brendan Fraser's Firefly and whatnot. Despite all of that, because it isn't theatrical enough for them with their Warner Brothers Discovery aspirations of making larger tempo DC movies, they're saying, nah, let's just do attacks right off instead and not release it on HBO Max, which we could actually do and wouldn't nearly cost the amount of marketing needed of that of a theatrical release. This is why reasons like that are why people are pissed because they could just release it on the streaming service. But their response to that would be, and I do understand it from a certain point of view, that with $90 million spent, they could do it as a tax write down and basically recoup the costs there rather than, um, you know, invest and release it, have it not get much of a return through HBO Max subscriptions so they don't have as much damage there effectively as if they did release it. They rather not let the, the, the creative work of Batgirl be seen and in a business sense, in their heads, obviously making sense to get some damages back there, recoup some of the loss via doing that tax write off. And um, yeah, it just sucks because it's like, oh, but what if it did kind of do well on HBO Max? What if people did subscribe to see it and things like that? But they don't really, you know, as far as the business blunt side of things goes, care about that. They want to recoup the 90 mil damages or like through the tax write off because they've got a whopping three bill issue that we're about to get into. This also means by the way, due to doing a tax write down of the Batgirl movie, legally Warner Brothers cannot monetize the movie. They will be literally unable to debut it on HBO Max theatrically, not sell it to another studio. It's basically confined to that of like a USB stick or a hard drive forever, unless it leaks online and people get to see it that way. You never know. Legally speaking, once you do a tax write down of this movie, of which they are doing, you can't therefore monetize it. Like you've literally done a tax write off of it, right? Like you put it under that. So you can't then be like, oh yeah, I'm doing a tax write off. Also now I'm making money off the movie by releasing it. That's not <laughs> the way tax write downs work. So this is where it gets to that more spicy side, despite the Warner Brothers Discovery statement and everything like that, it, despite it being positively received in test screenings, despite there nothing, there's nothing wrong with her exceptional performance and stuff like that. It's like, why not release it then? Well, the tax reasons, as I've already briefly teased, seem to be more and more about coming down to this purchase accounting maneuver. This opportunity for them expires mid-August, said sources, and the studio is trying to pare down $3 billion in debt across its divisions. So again, guys, here, due to the $3 billion in debt across its divisions, despite that they could still release it on HBO Max and let the work be seen by everyone, you know, of what was put into it and all of their efforts, they rather recoup the 90 million in costs to go against that of the 3 billion they're trying to shave and obviously avoid the tens of millions needed for marketing, etc., which could have nearly doubled the spending of the film. So as a result of all of this, for Variety says that sources say that this was just like a non-starter at a company newly focused on belt tightening and the bottom line, aiming to reduce costs as per what we're discussing. Which in one way, as I, as I keep saying, you can see like what they're doing, but it's still, I think for a lot of us, like man, Jesus, like it was basically a complete movie and I can't help but keep thinking about everyone who worked on this film. And this isn't even the end of it, guys. There's surely more to come. Like, there's even another thing which I haven't really spoken about because it's not really what I cover, but this isn't the only project that was literally, as in like literally, near completion. Now, very, very briefly here, you may have heard that Scoob Holiday Haunt received the exact same treatment as Batgirl. In the same efforts from Warner Brothers Discovery in a cost-saving tax write-off measure, Scoob Holiday Haunt has been shelved by the studio. It had already cost them. It's already cost them $40 million. It was near a complete product with the producer and writer Toby Savone, I probably butchered that name, saying, the movie is practically finished and turned out beautifully. I am beyond heartbroken. So here again, another product that we could basically watch, kind of similar to Batgirl, was only intended for an HBO Max release, yet we'll never see the light 
of day. It's one thing when a project, a product, a movie, a TV show is shooting its pilot, it's maybe cancelled or, you know, scrapped production in pre-production or even during the early days of production. But where these two projects are at, that's the reason why rival studio execs and other places major trades are calling it unprecedented. So with this news of Batgirl, what they've done to Batgirl, let's talk about what this could mean, as I teased earlier, the side of danger for other works that you may love and are looking forward to and how, who knows, it could receive a similar treatment because tomorrow this is why this is you know a topic of discussion right now tomorrow from when filming this is thursday august 4th and there is a somewhat event happening and it's this warner brothers discovery quarterly earnings report now to somewhat summarize it is what deadline are saying even though sources don't expect other films to get killed the way batgirl was due to the accounting opportunity expiring by the middle of the month they go on to say that but as all warner brothers discovery braces for thursday's quarterly earnings report and the layoffs that are sure to come no one with a project made specifically for hbo max or execs there can feel confident at this moment. So, are the DC films? People are now thinking Black Canary due to her apparently having a post credit scene at the end of the Batgirl movie, which, you know, led a lot of people to believe since there is a literal Black Canary movie in development. I've done a video talking about how there was a comment even made saying, oh yeah, we're really excited about what we've got you know, plan, so to speak, that was made very recently by Black Canary herself. But again, these plans were set up with the old regime, so to speak. Now, it could still arguably go forward with the new regime and make it a massive, massive tentpole, even though it does seem as though Black Canary would have been there anyway, but is that in danger? Blue Beetle, another HBO Max what was meant to be an exclusive HBO Max movie, but they made a decision quite a while ago to also make it a theatrical release. But it was under the old regime, if you will. And it recently wrapped filming. And now fans are really worried because think about it, Batgirl had wrapped. Like, you might be thinking, oh, no, they won't do that to Blue Beetle. You know, they just wrapped. And they, but that's literally what happened to Batgirl. So could it be in danger? We're even having the director of Blue Beetle liking tweets about keeping the movie from being cancelled. That is not definitive proof or anything, but we're just putting it out there. Hopefully it will be fine. But again, going back to the $3 billion trimming the fat off that thing that Warner Brothers Discovery and David Zaslav are currently having to deal with. And as even other reports with Zaslav saying, we don't know exactly how it's going to work with regards to his comments on the $3 billion in cuts. So do you know what I mean? They're just trying to like find things. So, okay, Batgirl, you've wrapped, we're gonna cut you. You know, we can do a tax right off a of 90 mil. And now they're looking at other things. You know, it's Blue Beetle, Black Canary, other things like that. So you see the wavelength that we're on here. He was quite vague on the $3 billion cuts. He even, as he admitted, we don't know exactly how it's going to work. It's not perfect, but that's why people are bracing themselves for the quarterly earnings report tomorrow. They could even make other decisions. Now, again, I'm not trying to do a fear mongery thing here. I don't really know, like who knows, but other uh, HBO Max things like Doom Patrol, a show that is near and dear to my heart. They could be like, okay, look, you're not gonna get another season after season four. And God knows what else, it's, it could all be in question. Now, some are even speculating, oh, you know, could The Flash be in danger given what we discussed earlier from the trade reports? Even with it, despite having a way bigger budget and it actually striving and is one of the tentpole movies but the thing is it is unlikely in my opinion I could be wrong I'll hold my hands up if I'm wrong but the movie is still the movie that is important to Warner Brothers Discovery what the movie is meant to be doing for the next phase of the DCEU there is a difference between Batgirl and the Flash movie. The studio is claiming to want to go in in a different direction. They don't want to solely release movies just for HBO Max anymore, of which was a part of that old regime before the merger. And that is exactly what Batgirl was. And also the, the Flash movie has had a massive amount of money put into it that far exceeds Batgirl. And it was always aimed for theatrical. So like, it, it, it's not exactly viewed in the same lens. And even with the Ezra Miller situation, the arrests, the allegations, they still likely want to release that as previous reports over the past weeks and even couple of months have said from insiders that they are hoping just for the best with regards to no more 
kind of reports about Ezra Miller. But obviously, as a result, many fans are feeling quite vexed by this because, um, you know, I've seen many tweets highlighting things and saying things among the lines of the arrests of Ezra Miller, the other allegations and claims, yet they cancelled the Batgirl movie. I also said at the beginning of the video that I wanted to touch on a whole other possibility of due to Batgirl now being shelved, another question is on various fans' minds. Have Warner Brothers Discovery somewhat changed their mind on the post-Flashpoint movie movie Keaton continuity side of things. So essentially what I'm trying to articulate here is that in the Batgirl movie it carried on from the events of The Flash. Affleck was believed to be more or less phased out of the mainline DCEU this setting up with The Flash movie which will carry on with a new continuity for the X amount of years because you know Barry screws with the timeline, he changes it, tries to bring it back but it's just a little bit different. Hence how Keaton was involved, hence him being in Batgirl coming out continuity-wise after the Flash movie. Even though recent claims, given the cancellation of Batgirl, have leaked with regards to what the story was going to be, they say that Michael Keaton didn't have as many scenes as what you'd think. He was still effectively the Bruce Wayne of the DCEU post-Flash movie. But then recently, especially with this new context of this cancellation of the Batgirl movie being shelved, we've had Affleck film Bruce Wayne scenes for Aquaman 2. Granted at the time, and even now, it, it did make sense and does make sense because Aquaman 2, of which was originally releasing after the Flash movie, had changed to release before the Flash movie. So the Keaton cameo no longer made sense at the end of Aquaman 2 and, you know, would be changed to the current Bruce Wayne of the timeline of the film's release and that would have been Ben Affleck's Bruce. But now fans are wondering, well, with Batgirl now being shelved, will they change the Flash movie in a way that now only has Keaton appear in the Flash movie and no longer echo out into the DCEU as the only sole Bruce Wayne, uh, you know, since Batgirl is no longer here. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't me saying that Ben Affleck is permanently coming back or anything like that. I'm just saying that maybe with Batgirl gone, Keaton might just stick with the Flash movie, with Barry screwing over the timeline. Affleck could still be phased out. And who knows? We could even get a new Bruce Wayne post-Flash movie continuity in the DCEU. Of course, like at the same time, I have to acknowledge it, Ben Affleck might be down for more appearances post-Flash movie if Keaton is no longer the Bruce Wayne in the DCEU after the Flash movie releases. There is no evidence for that, even though Batgirl is gone, doesn't mean that he wants to appear in a future movie, but there's just this intuition of fans being like, hmm, maybe they will just keep Keaton to the Flash movie now. For now, this is all just left to speculation, and after what Affleck has said, I can't really personally imagine that despite that he was down to appear in a minor role in the Flash movie, likely as a way to say somewhat goodbye to the character, but as I've mentioned, maybe leave the door ajar by leaving him in the Snyderverse or in the Nightmare timeline still, whilst Barry and the main DCU continues this way. And even though he's recently, very recently, appeared in a minor role in Aquaman 2, somewhat setting up the Flash movie continuity-wise, I still can't imagine that he'd be willing to commit to a whole multi-picture continuity of a new DC cinematic universe that will be set up at the end of the Flash movie, you know? So, I don't know about that. Never say never, but just don't be like, oh my god, FLX now back as Batman. We, we Just because he's got two minor roles and Batgirl's been cancelled, Still speculation. And lastly, guys, with regards to this video, there's a lot of talk now about just the creative capital loss that Warner Brothers Discovery could have now. Because a lot of people are thinking what directors or stars would really kind of want to work with a studio in where you can shoot a movie, wrap the movie, get into the later stages of post-production, and have it then completely shelved. It doesn't exactly send out the best message, despite reports saying it's unlikely anything of this magnitude will be killed given due to the expiry of the middle of the month not really being able to do that. But even so, it's ironic enough to me that Variety reported that David Zaslav went on a well-publicized listening tour designed to repair the company's relationship with the creative community. And that was all in an effort uh, to fix that stain that Warner Brothers put out with that infamous decision Keeler made to release the studio's entire 2021 theatrical slate simultaneously on HBO Max, which pissed off many directors at the time in the pandemic, if you, if you remember that. So that's what David Zaslav was doing, yet how 
when you've just made a decision that is gonna kind of piss off and maybe lose you a lot of creative capital. I can't just imagine that this 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 decision will reverse or restore any creative capital. It will only make it worse. So I don't know guys. I know this video has been going on for a long time, but you know me, I can't help but get into in-depth detail with it. There is one takeaway with this and it sucks and that there could be more to come. Yeah. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I think it's a really shitey situation. And like the video if you got this far, I guess. I, I'd appreciate that. Maybe we'd get more people to come across this video. But that's more or less all I have to say. So subscribe for more videos like this. I hope to not make more videos like this, but it could very well be happening. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.